All right, my name's Phil, I like talking about politics. And in this quick video, I'm gonna contribute my thoughts to the analysis of A-level grades, mostly from England this year. Uh, it's very revealing about the extent to which the government facilitated the abuse of the pandemic systems by private schools and have driven up the gap between richer and poorer parts of the country. Never mind the rhetoric, whenever you put the Tories leveling up claims to the test, always turns out that they're leveling down. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So I've not just been a teacher for years before I started shouting at the internet for a living, but I was teaching part-time in a sixth form college during the most restrictive pandemic measures. You know, back in 2020, the government had this idea to use an algorithm to produce A-level and GCSE grades throughout most of the UK. Scotland has its own system. It is different uh, qualifications, but it did make the same mistakes in that first year at least. Now, if you, if you weren't gonna have exams, obviously there needed to be a system, certainly. But the system adopted by both Westminster and Holyrood was roundly criticized and well ahead of time. Now I'll focus on the Westminster government here because that's what I've got the most detailed analysis for. It's what I've got the personal experience of. Uh, but it is likely that some of the same consequences hit Scotland as well. In fact, a couple of them I know did. Um, also, I am going to discuss a few other issues in the video, and I don't know whether or not they affected those in Scotland. Basically, the algorithm had a habit of favouring students from certain schools, mostly private schools. Now, I don't think it was a case of deliberate corruption here, by the way. I just think certain prejudices were built into the model accidentally. But the result was going to be an almighty fail for good students from more deprived areas. We could see it coming a mile off. The government were urged by teachers, as soon as we realised what was going on, which was very late in the day, to change the way they were doing things. I can tell you that as a teacher involved in the process throughout, what we got from the Department for Education was opaque and confused. The entire process was a mess, but ministers persisted. The results were released two years ago, and it was totally unsustainable. The government eventually realised it was totally unsustainable, relented, and decided to go with teacher assessments instead. Now, this is also not ideal. And they, but they also added a caveat that no student should be downgraded because of the change in policy. It was very messy. You could see the results that many private schools had completely taken the piss. Of course, they were always going to. Their customers, the parents, pay them directly to get their offspring the best results. That's why you pay for your sprog to go to a private school. The shitstorm. If a teacher predicted a grade less than what a parent thought their little Johnny or Jenny was worth, would not be worth the hassle. So in changing the system to one to make the gap between haves and have-nots look less extreme, they just allowed privately educated kids to get grades that no sensible employer can ever take seriously. Because this does a disservice to the good students, whether privately educated or not. If I was someone looking at someone's grades, and I noticed it was from 2020, or you know, to a lesser extent 2021, but still, same sort of issue, I would judge it with deep suspicion. In fact, frankly, I would probably consider it not reliable at all and think, Adam, I'm gonna have to come up with my own assessment to see your worth here, because I wouldn't be able to believe the grade. You know, and the latest analysis shows just how bad privately schools took the piss. The Financial Times had this chart showing how much the top grades, this is for the top grades this year, differed from the previous two years when teacher assessments were used. Private schools had far and away the biggest crash in grades of order. So what this shows is the difference between what a teacher in a private school thinks that their better students are going to be getting and what they actually get when you put them under, you know, exam conditions is way out of kilter. You also notice that sixth form college has got it pretty much bang on. I noticed a right wing commentator trying to make sense of this without, you know, trying to admit that private schools took the piss by trying to say, oh, has this got something to do with the better teaching in private schools? But as the analyst pointed out to him, no, because that would have meant that private schools suffered more during this year's. It was the teaching that was hit hard. Privately educated kids all had access to computers, internet, 
and a suitable space at home. Of course they do. If their parents can afford to send them to private school, they can afford to have all those things at home. This was not the case for a lot of my students, for example. We had to try and get them laptops, in some cases dongles, even then it wasn't always possible. So now, in private schools, the thing that was hit was that teaching, that on-site, in-classroom teaching. In a private school, they benefit from having a low student-to-teacher ratio, more personal time. This is less effective remotely. So now, if this was a factor, private schools should have had their results over the last two years suffer very badly. Very badly indeed. Not now. They should have had a jump up now. So now. In fact, this suggestion just raises the suspicions even more that private schools as good as printed their own certificates. And I can tell you, as someone who did work in a sixth form college at the time and has done for a while before, the reason they got their top grade predictions spot on is because they are basically the most efficient providers of A-level education. In a sixth form college, you've got teachers who teach these courses all the time, multiple. You know, when I've taught these things in schools, it's like, that's my class for the week. And then I've got a load of other different classes for different year groups. Sixth form college, no, this is what you teach. It's their entire focus. Very experienced at predicting grades, a lot of emphasis on accuracy from managers as well. I also know from working in one during this period that there was massive pressure from managers to make sure we had a robust system to back up our forecasts. Because as I said, the information we got from the government was very poor. We were having to run assessments as best we could without knowing how the final grades were going to be determined. We had no idea. No idea at all. We, so we were working on assessments without knowing how they'd be used to work out the final grades. So we made sure we did the best we could. We made, did a wet, right, wide range of types of assessments, robust methodology in place so that if anyone wanted to check out why we'd awarded a particular grade or how we believe that this assessment was a fair reflection of that student, it, would all, it was all there. Be easy to defend. I had absolutely no doubts the same process was going on in every sixth form college in the country. So no surprise to me that the top grades awarded at these colleges remained very close to what they were during the lockdown years. In schools, as I say, to be fair, there's lots of different foci they will have had. They would have had a focus on the, the um, key stage three, key stage four, as well as the A-levels and so on. It'd been much more difficult. Teachers were very much focused on their area in a sixth form college. But then there's this map of England, also in the Financial Times article. The darker areas show where a higher proportion of students get the top grades. Darker in the south of England, lighter in the north. And this isn't H.G. Wells, the time machine we're living in here. Our population hasn't actually descended into two different species. We're all still human beings with the same spread of intelligence. The simple situation is that if you look in the more affluent parts of the country, students get better grades. This is a pretty good indicator for the success of levelling up. Qualifications are key to access to a wide range of aspirations, most of them in fact. How much access do people have to those keys depending on where they're growing up, their postcode lottery? This chart shows a long way to go in closing the gap. But it's not just that the gap is there. It was there before the pandemic. It was there before Boris Johnson took over. It's widening. Analysis in The Guardian this time showed that the gap in top grades between the affluent southeast of England and the deprived northeast of England was between 4 and 5% before the pandemic. This year it's more than 8%. Now what this will be down to is the lack of funding that those schools and colleges were given to deal with the pandemic. Like I said before, the privately educated kids or kids from affluent areas, when they had to be taught remotely from home, they will have had access to a computer, a nice, quiet, sensible area to work with it, internet access, no problems at all. If they needed anything else, their parents would have got it to them. Overnight, and I mean literally overnight, the government told schools to close their buildings and teach remotely. This not only made it difficult for students without access to a computer, the internet and a quiet study area, but also for schools and colleges that may not have had the funds to get extra equipment in to those in need. A lot of kids from these deprived areas will have missed out on a lot. And that'll continue to affect them for some time to come. The government did basically nothing. There was no funding to make sure that students didn't miss out. No serious support for schools and colleges to cope with complex needs remotely. 
And this is the price we pay for having a greedy, corrupt, lazy and uncaring government in place during a genuine national emergency, which I remind you, for those who think it took us by surprise, the Conservative government for 10 years beforehand had it as their number one threat to the nation. It was there in meetings. They knew it. Getting ready for a pandemic that might require lockdowns. In 2010, they identified it as a serious risk, the most serious risk to the nation. And the effects can't be wiped away quickly. It's not just one or two year groups that are affected. A dozen. Everyone at school, college or university at the time has had two years of their education hit. And that'll feed through for years to come. So when the next Prime Minister bemoans a skills gap in the UK, you can remember that they didn't cause it. But they sat in the cabinet of the government who made it even worse, for no better reason than greed and vain ambition. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.